Okay, just waiting for 100% to go, and we're live. This is Chapter 7 of Dennis Wixom and Tea Garden Systems Analysis and Design with UML 5th Edition, and it's entitled Moving On to Design. So far, we've mostly been talking about requirements elicitation, requirements capture, and requirements analysis. We've got the use case diagrams, we've done some sequence diagrams, we're going to do some activity and state diagrams, and that's all about um, analysis. I've shown you a very quick and dirty way of moving from the use case diagram and the use case description to analysis classes and um, we've used those analysis classes with the sequence diagram, activity diagrams, etc. Class diagrams too, to see the, show the structure. But those classes, those analysis classes, are not the things we're going to actually program. The reason is they're probably um, different sizes and different shapes and may not make a lot of sense in terms of actually programming it up. So let's talk about how we actually program it up. So the aim is for this chapter is to verify and validate the analysis models, understand what we're doing when we transition from analysis to design, understand use of factoring, partitions and layers, be able to create package diagrams, which you could think of as a, a type of class diagram perhaps. Be familiar with the custom package and outsource design alternatives, and then be able to create an alternative matrix. Um, I'm not gonna read this slide. You can read the slides as well as I can. Um, but the key piece for me is the, the line, the, the third bullet point third uh, light blue bullet point. So the analysis and design phases are highly interrelated, right? And uh, maybe I should uh, have put myself on do not disturb. There we go. Um, so you're going to go oscillate between what you were doing with the analysis and how you're thinking about your design. You're not going to just go from analysis straight to design and not look back, right? Um, you're probably going to be thinking about things in a little bit more detail once you start design, and that's probably going to impact how you think about um, the problem. So be aware that that's likely to happen. So that's what we've got to do. Verify and validate the analysis models, evolve the analysis into design, create packages and make um, document them using package diagrams, and then decide upon a design strategy. So you've got to verify and validate your model. What that means is does the model solve the problem, right? Is it going to uh, let you um, identify the right size shoe for perfect fit? Is it going to allow uh, job seekers and employers to connect for Ventana, right? There's, these are the, the things that you want. Not just those, but the details of how those things happen. So you've got to look at those diagrams that you created or are going to create to see whether that's true. And you've got to balance the models to ensure that there's consistency, right? That it all hangs together as a story. So here's some rules of thumb if you like. A class on a class diagram must be associated with at least one use case. An activity should be related to one or more operations in a class diagram. An object on an activity diagram must be associated with an instance or an attribute on a class diagram. An attribute 
or an association aggregation relationship on a class diagram should be related to the subject or object of the use case. Right? All of the things that we've been looking at, the analysis classes and the sequence diagrams, they should all tell a consistent story. And so far, as far as I've seen, we're not yet telling a consistent story with any of them. So we, we need to we need to scrub that a bit. Um, I think I've said that just about every use case should have a, an associated sequence diagram. Each sequence diagram can be converted into a communication diagram. So that should happen. Um, Looking at the, the crude matrices can be useful. Making Make sure that the, the messages on the sequence diagrams um, uh, relate to activities, right? And events in the use case. And then all complex objects in the activity diagrams must be represented in a behavioral state machine. Some times you don't need many states but it's still worthwhile figuring out what those states are and I, I'm, I'm not going to read through all of these things but you, sh you should understand what each of these things mean and um, how it relates to the appropriate part of the analysis model right remember we're verifying and validating the analysis model So the analysis model is focused on the functional requirements. Um, with design, we've also got to now start pulling in the, I'm not going to call it that, I'm going to call it um, cross-functional requirements, right? So system performance, environmental issues, distributed versus centralized processing, the user interface, the database, right? So we have to start pulling in and one of the things that's why I talked about the uh, architecture in last the last lecture is once you start understanding the important pieces of how to solve your problem, the architecture, then um, you'll be able to, to talk about some of these cross-functional requirements if you have them. Um, the system must be maintainable and affordable and efficient and effective and you want to use factoring and partitions appropriately. Those last two points for me are a little bit nebulous so far and we're going to have to dig a little deeper and come up with a, a, an actual example to make sure that, that, that that's clear. So don't, don't worry too much about um, if those two are a little nebulous. Right, so um, factoring. This is about uh, changing the form of things so that they make a little bit more sense. So we are, our analysis classes are probably um, just straight out of the text or the diagrams, but we need to move towards, if we're using a, a programming framework, for example, um, or we've come across other requirements during our analysis, then we need to we need to do a little bit more right. and that's what factoring is is moving things around um, abstracting things out so that we've got some uh, some base classes that maybe we need to uh, uh, derive uh, other classes from and the other thing we've got to do is partition and figure out the collaborations, right? Um, you, usually the partitions are related to the different use cases, the different ellipses in the use case diagram. Sometimes they're um, related to what I call cross-cutting concerns, things like security or um, uh, sometimes availability, right? How you partition your system um, will depend on, on things like that. And the, the aim is to figure out 
which classes to be grouped together. I think I've said before, one of the echoes for me between boundary controller and entity classes is the um, model view controller MVC architecture that some people uh, use and some systems use. And the that's one way to start to partition. The entities belong in the model, the controllers belong in the controller, and uh, the views are the, the boundary classes or the interface classes. And then we need to think about um, layering, right? Um, you probably heard about a thing called a, an, an N-tier application. And N-tier usually refers to a, a layering of um, different things. For example, down the bottom, the foundation, the problem domain, the data management, the user interface, and the physical architecture. All of those things are important. Okay, and packages are just grouping together diff uh, classes in related groups, right? And then you can relate the uh, packages um, between each other to see how they communicate. Here's a package, right? It's like a folder, and you've got a dependency relationship, which is just a, an arrow. And this is the example that I had uh, during the class the other day, right? Human computer interaction is the top level thing. Uh, there's the problem domain, which was where all the models sit. Maybe the data management um, helps uh, persistence of the models in the problem domain. The physical architecture helps implement everything. And then the foundation is how things are, uh, are what things are built on. So here's some guidelines for, for a package diagram. Use them to logically organize your design. Use vertical or horizontal positioning to, to, to indicate either inheritance in terms of vertical or aggregation and association in terms of horizontal. Dependency relationships, the arrows, should observe semantic relationships. So it should make sense that the, the, there's a relationship between different packages. Um, if you're packaging up analysis classes that could include actors so you could uh, include actors in those diagrams use simple but descriptive names naming is one of the key pieces of things in software if you choose the right name that's expressive and descriptive that can make a difference between um, understanding how it works and not understanding how it works and the last thing is make packages cohesive. So packages should work well together. And remember we talked about coupling versus cohesion in the, uh, in the last lecture. Oops. Um, I'm not gonna read that. You can read it as well as I can. Um, the key piece, again, is to verify and validate it. Does it make sense? Does it hang together as a story? You're, one of the things we're trying to do with all of this stuff is to describe the system before we build it. And if everybody has the same idea about what the building is going to be, then we'll probably make fewer mistakes when we actually come to code it up. Um, there's lots of ways to, to do a, a design. You can build it in-house, you can purchase package software that does it, or you can hire a, an external vendor to do it. Nice thing about custom development is you can meet very highly specialized requirements. Um, it does allow uh, 
does put more burden on the IT stuff and it can add risk to what you're doing. Package software, it's already done. It may be more efficient or cheaper, right? Um, it's probably more thoroughly tested and proven than if you're building it in-house. Um, however, you must accept the functionality provided, right? It, it's not going to do necessarily precisely what you want, so you may need to customize it significantly. Um, system integration, so building a new system by combining packages, legacy systems and new software is challenging, right? Um, it, it often happens, but it's there's a lot of um, stuff. If you ever get into systems engineering, which is related to software engineering, the thing that systems engineers all try and do is to control the build, is to control the interface, is to control how uh, the, um, uh, the, the touch points between different parts of the system. If you're going to outsource, um, that's good, but it requires a lot of co coordination and communication. Um, you do lose control. You don't have a, a lot of control over how your vendor does what they do. Um, and then you've got a problems with, or you've got to decide what sort of contract type makes the most sense. Um, I'd call the first one time and materials. Right, so you just pay for everything. Um, you may have to agree on a fixed price contract. And uh, sometimes you've got to say, um, okay, we'll give you a cut of uh, whatever it is we're, we're trying to make out of this money. And there's a uh, some uh, reasons for doing one or the other of the things, right? left hand side is the the the, the criteria and then um, the the three columns of those three different ways of doing it custom development buying a package system or outsourcing the development again i'm not going to read through it you can read through it as well as i can um so how do you decide to uh, acquire stuff, right? Um, how do you decide between those different things? Um, the same way you decide, in it, make any other informed d decision. You decide what your criteria are, and then you um, compare each option against those selected criteria. And I think I've told, talked about in class, um, one way to present that information is in a pew matrix. Okay, I've talked about uh, verifying and validating the analysis model, evolving from analysis to design. I've talked about package, packages and package diagrams. I've talked about design strategies, and then I've talked about how do you do the actual design in terms of those three options. And uh, I think that's it. Let's uh, leave it there.